Hello everybody, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back. Part 9 now of the build of this uh, beautiful Hong Kong Models A20G. So, um, looking through the instructions, as you know, we've, we've in the first seven parts we've built the cockpit three times and we've now done the undercarriage bay. We haven't done the front wheel yet because we're not putting that on yet, but we've done everything else that's here. So, um, now we're on to step, step five, which is actually the construction of the turret. Now, as you can see, I've got on here marked PE, PE, a couple of places, and that's where we're going to be using the Edward photo etch set. So we've got bits of PE on here and here. We've got our instructions here for the Edward photo etch. More about that in a minute. Um, we've also got photo etch parts from the kit, photo etch frets. So we've got those little those gears there, which are going to be pulling the uh, bullets around. We've got photo etch bullets to put in there, as you can see here. I was going to use the MDC ones, but the MDC ones I've got are actually in the, um, they're in the track, like on a 50 cal. So I can't use them, so I'm going to have to use these photo etch ones. And what we'll do is we'll put some white glue or something on them just to give them a bit of shape, because in 30 seconds scale, it's a bit 2D having those in photo etch. So we'll try and uh, brighten them up a little bit. It's better than having nothing there at all. We'll see how it looks. Um, I'm surprised there's nothing in the kit, actually. They could have easily moulded you know, a sort of a semicircular band of four or five bullets. So it just looks like there's something there, but um, obviously they didn't bother. Um, so what we're going to do is, first of all, have a look at this, make sure we're familiar with it all, make sure we're familiar with the location of where the photo etch is going to go, what we're actually going to use, what we're not going to use. The first thing I want to talk about is if you've got the photo etch set, be very, very careful because what they're telling you to do here is to modify the plastic part H47. So you've got the plastic part H47 and you're going to use your piece of photo etch number seven, which is just there. OK, that green box in front of my finger, that's number seven. So they're telling you to modify that and fit that on there. OK. If we go through the manual, get to step 13. We're doing the port inner fuselage. There's H47. When we come to the photo etch and we look at the port fuselage, there's H47 and we're fitting to it piece of PE number seven. So what do they want us to do? Do they want us to put that in the turret or do they want us to put it in the fuselage? You tell me. So I'm not putting that in the turret because there's no call for it and it wouldn't really be seen anyway. So um, go back to step five. So that there we need to completely ignore. They've made a mistake, I think. Uh, next time I speak to them, I'll let them know. So, so that's that. So we can basically get on and get our turret assembled. Now, the beauty of this kit, much like the later FX kits as well, they've got all of the turret. Everything in that step, except for the clear canopy, is one, one fret. So you just need that one fret, and there you go. It's not like... You know, if you've watched Paul doing his 148 submarine, you know, you've got this huge box with about three or four or five boxes inside it full of sprues. And you've got, you know, an assembly like this. So something like this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six parts. And they're on six different sprues. And you've got to go and find them. It's like, oh, doing it like this is so much better. The other thing is I've washed the sprues from this kit because I found they were quite oily. Um, so... Best check yours and perhaps give yours a wash as well, especially if you're using like water-based paints because they won't stick very well at all to, to a, a less than perfectly clean surface. So I know we're going to be touching it and getting fingers on it, but you know it's best to start off. I did have a problem with the roof of the nose gear bay. I primed it and when I went to sand it, the paint all just peeled off um, and that was really weird. That was Mr. Servicer and uh, yeah, it was obviously grease on the part. So um what we can do here is build it all up and then before we paint it we can just go over the cotton bud with some uh, some um, thinners on it or something. We've got some ejector pin marks to get rid of. We've got a couple there in the seat, as you can see them there. Um, there's a couple here in that piece of shielding. Um, there's some in the side of the guns there. So we'll have to be careful, we'll get rid of those. We may as well do that before we start. So the first thing to do is basically get all the parts off the fret because we can identify them all. We don't need to have them all numbered. So we can get them all off the fret, get them all cleaned up, get the ejector pin marks filled with some super glue and go from there. Right, so we've got all our parts here. We've done the 
injector pin marks and everything as you can see there. There was also some sinkage in the sides here, so I've dealt with that as well. Not sure you're even going to see it, but we'll have a look. Um, just a couple of other injector pin marks on different bits and pieces. Uh, one in the side of the machine gun there, which has been dealt with. Um, one in the back of there. It's just a, a few little bits and pieces really that need... That one hasn't been sanded yet. I've not sanded it, so I'm going to get my Infini PE sander, which is nice and hard. So we can sand that and keep it flat. And there we go. There we are, and then just come along and just scrape the edges lightly, the corners. There's a sprue nib left on there as well. Look. Sloppy workmanship this is. As usual, some of you will say. So there we go. Let me just remove that sandy edge. There we are. Right, that looks very much like that part H57 are telling us to use. Hmm. Interesting. So, um, <clears throat> I've got the book out and had a look and it would appear that once again, as per the Hong Kong Models Lancaster, this turret is a little bit simplified. Um, I would say this is much better than the Lancaster. Because I feel those turrets are quite simplified. But you can see straight away on here, you've got this around the top. You have this radial sort of tin ring um, over the guns. I'm not sure the best place to show you really. But there's obviously like a, a, a tin sheet that goes over. So as the guns, obviously you've got a slot here where the where the gun can elevate up. So that there's that shield which just shields the the, the, the outside world from the from the, the gunner. So when he actually puts the gun down, he hasn't got a great big gap up there because if he's facing, you know, if he's got the gun facing forward and they're flying along at sort of 300 mile an hour, it's going to be quite drafty. So they have these shields and they're completely missing in the kit. Um, and also, I got a feeling, a funny feeling, there is no gun sight. Um, we can see here that it looks like there's something sticking up there. Um, but it does appear there are quite a few. There's, there's another image here, drawing, and we've got the, the gun sight there, as you can see it, and it just appears to be completely missing. But it also appears that this drawing here doesn't seem to represent what we've got. I mean, we've got that, that, pulley, got that, that pulley wheel going across there, but we don't have these two round cylinders. It's, it's strange. But, um, Unless they're part of the drive mechanism that pulls the bullets through. And I can't see in here where the bullets actually end up. We can see here we've got an image of those the wheels. But there's there's nowhere where they go. But um, there's also these two wheels on here which are missing. But you're not going to really see them anyway. But I think the most prominent omission is that those, those shields over the top. You can see them in the drawing there. So, um... But anyway, there we go. So I have done some small modifications on a couple of little bits and pieces. Uh, this here, this is the, this is part doo -doo -doo, I-21. And this is here, and th this is where the, sort of the seat goes underneath like that. And that goes in there like that. So the, this is, whoops, this is the gunner's footrest. And as moulded, it's square. So what I've done is sort of cut it all about and sanded it. It should be a circular, a round tube. It's like a piece of tube bent up and put in there. So um, I'm just going to clean out those, those corners there, get a bit of a better sharp that's going on. There we go. So um, that's all going to fit. So looking at the instructions, the first thing we have to do, according to the instructions, is fit these PE wheels onto here. So that's what I'm going to do first. I've got a drop of super glue over there in my Pringles lid. People ask what this orange thing is. This is a Pringles lid and underneath there is a, is a Nescafe Azira lid. And the only reason I do that is so I can see the glue better with the background there. So, um, and also I don't ever put the Pringles lid down upside down. 
So uh, we're going to get our photo etch fret and we are going to remove these parts, get the photo etch fret the right way up and then we can see the, the ends of the teeth. Don't go cutting the ends of the teeth off, do we? And there we go. So make sure we keep our finger on here. Stop it flying off. There we go. So that's those four taken out. So we can get those glued on now and the part we need is here. Oh, there's those cylinders. Okay, so they are there. Those round cylinders are there. So these are literally going to just pick one up. They're just going to glue onto there. Like so. They're actually, the holes are slightly too small. So what I'm going to do is, unless, hang on, maybe they are supposed to go on the end. Yes, they are. Sorry, they're not supposed to go all the way down. So what we're going to do is put a drop of super glue on here, on the end, use the black and then we can see what we're doing. Just going to put a drop of super glue on there. Wet my finger, pick this up, and then we can put it on just like so. And that is it. It sort of sits on the end. It doesn't have to go. It's not supposed to go right over. So that's that on there. I'm going to grab one of my little painting clips and hold that. It makes it easier to. Hold without damaging the, the last one. So wet my finger, pick that up, get it in the tweezers, and boop, pops your uncle. There it is. We can get them lined up. Just like so. And there we are. Do the same on the other side, let them dry and then I'll be back. Okay, pressing ever further forward, looking on here we've got some photo etch to think about. So we've got this um, badge here going on the back of the plaque, going on the back of the seat, but that's coloured. It's coloured photo etch so we're not going to use that after, until after it's painted. This piece here, 42, that's there. Um, that's not painted so we can fit that now. We've got to remove some plastic. We've got the bits going on the top of the guns, they're not painted so we can fit them now. We've got this panel here, that's painted so we're not going to fit that yet. And also this 41 here that you fold up, that's supposed to be like a missile switch. You know, one of, one of the covered switches. So I'll use one of the Anise switches on that instead of the, um, instead of the kit part. Um, and then here we've got to cut this off and get that glued on. So, we're going to grab this part here, this is on a 22 and you've got this piece on the back here that, that is going to fit on. So the first thing we're going to do is take a sanding sponge like so. We're going to lay that on there and then we'll get an X-Acto handle and just gently roll this. Make sure you come right off the ends otherwise what will happen is you end up with a radius in the middle. Now the other problem with this because it's thinner in the middle it's, it's sort of bending rather than going into a radius. So I'll see the fit, so we need to put some more in there. In fact, I'm going to try it on a harder surface. Let's try it on this sanding stick here. Then we won't get that big sag in the middle. There we go, that's better. See, I put it on a hard stick and we haven't, we've got a constant radius now. It hasn't bent in the middle where it's thinner and there's a hole. So you can see now that uh, that's too tight, so we can flatten it out. So what we can do here is just flatten it out. But we want to get a nice fit because otherwise that you don't want it stressed because it will just one day it will ping off. 
so that's that's as near as damn it so just a slight bit of more roll into it there and there we go that's that's fitting on the lovely now so now we've done that we can come along with a pair of cutters and remove remove most of the plastic that we need to cut away just like so we can cut down those angles there and then with our knife we can come in Gotta be careful not to cut that, that little pip sticking up in the middle. We don't want to go cutting that off. So we'll carve that away and then clean it all up. So I'll get this done and then I'll be back when it's done. I'll show you how it looks. Alright, so that's on there. All nice and solid. And then we've got those tops on those machine gun breeches. So that's that all done. And now what I'm going to do is get my skinny sponge and just take away the sheen, remove any excess glue or anything. Just so the paint takes a bit better. There we are. Right, so that's that done. Now, doo -doo -doo -doo, we've got Oh, too much coloured, we're not putting those on yet, we're not doing that, we've done that, brilliant. So, there's a little bit on the canopy as well. Um, so now we can start looking at the plastic parts. Now the photo etch that goes on, the piece that's going on to here, what we can do is leave that part off and then put it in afterwards. Um, this piece, these two pieces here can go on. We can do this main part here, we'll leave the ammo boxes off because they're a different colour and the seat can go in with these bits and pieces on the sides. So we've got the seat here and we have this box that's going on the bottom and you have a some switches and stuff and they face backwards. So that seat's literally going to sit on there so what we'll do is we'll get our Tamiya glues over and we'll get some of the the white glue in here. And we will put that on there like that. Okay, so that's that glued in place. And then what we'll do is with the extra thin, because this had a seam line down the middle, if you get some extra thin on a brush, nothing too wet, and just go over it, you'll remove any sanding marks or anything you've left behind like so so that's that done and then we've got these cylinders going on the sides these are handed so we're looking at that one there so that one is ie 12 so that one's going on that side and that's just going to go on to there I'm guessing yeah okay so we'll get some extra thin put a drop of extra thin in there and then we'll drop one down onto there. We'll do the same with this one. There we go, that's those two on. Let those just gel off and then we can pull them around and make sure they're straight and everything. There we go. There we are, that's that done. Right, so that's the seat assembly done. And as I say, we have got a PE placard to go on the back of there, but we'll leave that until it's dry, uh, until it's painted. Um, so here we've got those ammo boxes going in. I'm gonna, I want to leave those out for now, 
I'm sure I'll be able to put them in because that'll be glued onto there like that. The seat's going to be over here. I'm sure I'll be able to slip those in so that'll be fine. I'm not going to put the gun breeches in yet either because they're obviously a different colour. Uh, so looking over here we've got all this assembly going on here. So we've got this tiny little piece here, I4. And the instructions aren't that clear as to which way it goes. So let's just have a look. It looks like it's going like that. Okay. So it looks like it's going like that. No, nope, like that. So you've got a little pin on one side and that pin is facing backwards. So that's some sort of button I'm guessing. And that's going to go onto, no it's not, it's going to go onto here. Um, no, it's, it's going onto there, that's right. So that piece is going on, we've got a tiny little, blimey. There is a tiny, tiny little notch in there. So I'm assuming this could be the gun sight that I said was missing. It's a shame it's not clear. When I say not, I don't mean um, unclear, I mean it's a shame it's not made from clear plastic. It's not very clear which way this goes even. Let's try holding it that way. I'm assuming that's how it fits there. I think maybe that lump of plastic in the middle there, I think that's supposed to be our gun sight, which is... The trouble is we've been spoilt with the Wingnut Wings Lancaster. The turrets in that thing are amazing. And um, it's only to be expected because Wingnut Wings were a very, very high quality kit manufacturer. They also had genuine turrets as reference. They borrowed them from Kermit Weeks. So they had genuine turrets on site to work from. So, you know, you'd expect them to be, you know, all these guys have got is a load of photographs and probably a couple of restored turrets to work with, which have probably got parts missing. So <clears throat> that's going to now go into there. Now I accidentally, on here there's a sprue nib and I accidentally cut that off with the sprue nib. So be careful, there's a little square lug there and there's one on that side but as I say I've cut that off so what I'm going to do is put some extra thin there and then <clears throat> drop this in and get this side lined up and then just make sure it's parallel because I have nothing to align the other side I wish, something else I wish there were more images in these instructions that show you the parts once they're fitted. That's going to go on an angle like that by the look of it. There's a lot of guesswork. There's a lot of guesswork as to how all this goes. Because all we've got is there's, there's, there's an image here. You can see it's kind of parallel with the upper edge, so that looks about right. Okay. I'm guessing that's going to be about right. I don't think it's going to interfere with anything. Um, and then we've got these pieces here which support the gun breeches. We've got to be careful, make sure we get the right ones. So that one is I1, this is I2 here. So that one there is I2. And that's going to go onto the side of here. Now, when I test fitted this,
Okay, so it's, that's going that way up. When I chest fitted this, you can see there's a lot of play. You've got a very small square lump in a very large hole. So I guess we just have to put it together and hope for the best. Um, I think what I'll do is fit, fit this piece as well. Maybe that will help us. That's that all glued in there. Um, <clears throat> now we've got this piece here with the gears on. And that is going to go into there. So that is just going to sit down in there. There we go, there's a little tiny peg in there it sits on. So that's that one in there now. And there we go. And eventually that is going to go into here like so. And then the gunner's going to put his head up through there and his arms are going to be down here on the triggers underneath. So it's going to be quite a busy little turret. I wish it did have those bits over the top because they are so prominent on the real thing. But I have seen some pictures of restored ones and they're missing and that's possibly what they've used at HK Models. So this one... This one's going on that side, like that. And that one, other one is going on this side, like that. But as I say, I've put that one upside down, haven't I? As I say, we have no We have no idea where they're supposed to go because we've got all that play in them. In fact, we could possibly see on here. Okay, they've got the ends. Sort of like that. They've got the ends kind of lined up. So there's you can't actually pivot these guns, there's no pivot mechanism on them at all. So that's that. Um, now this is going to glue, as I say, into there. Now, if I glue this into here, is it going to affect my ability to paint anything? Um, I think the answer to that is no. We will just check with that fitted, if we put the gun breech in here, we're going to have our guns basically pointing slightly upwards. That's okay, right. But we need to make sure we have got those two dead parallel, otherwise our guns are going to be looking a bit silly. So they need to be the same height and parallel. It's a shame they don't have a more positive, it would have been better if they'd have had two pegs and two holes on each part. It would have been a lot better. I mean, if you wanted movable guns, you could probably drill through there and put a pivot in there. But, uh, 
I'm not particularly worried about having movable guns. And there we are. So I'm going to put another drop of extra thin in just to make sure they're nice and strong because we've been moving around since we glued them. So I think what we'll do is leave that to dry for a minute and then we'll come back to it. What we could do is go on and fit this lower section here. So we'll get some cement into there. So that's that one place. And then this seat is going to go over here. Now what I'm wondering, if I put that seat in there, is that going to stop me fitting anything up inside? Um, hmm. We've also got this gusset here, so I'm going to fit that now because that will determine the position of that piece there. Look, nice little click where that clipped in. There's an ejection bit mark in the middle there, but I haven't bothered with that one because the ammo boxes come round, so you're not going to see it anyway. And quite frankly, unless you take the turret out, you're not going to see any of this at all because it's all down inside the aircraft. Um, now I'm thinking if I put that seat in, will it restrict? No, I'd rather have a nice strongly fitted seat. That's a good indication there. We need to take something off of that tab because it's sitting on that tab and rocking. That's better. Whoops. I think we'll put a drop of glue in there just to give it something to bite on. It just really doesn't want to go in there. I'm looking at it, I'm just wondering if. Go, that's better. So we'll get some glue around the back. Get a nice strong welded joint on that one. There we are. So that's our seat. And I should have to do some more research and see about the uh, where the belts go. I would imagine they would just be hanging off the side of the seat. There are no there are no belts provided in the kit for this. Um, but I have got the HGW ones if you remember from the Art Scale kit set. We've managed to move that cylinder, so we'll get that trued up, and then we can leave that to set. Um, that needs to be well cured before we start playing with that because that seat's going to be quite vulnerable and that's going to go in there as I've said before so I think what I'll do is fit that afterwards because it's going to be difficult to detail paint up inside there and also we've got to get that bit there up in there um, I'm just looking at this piece here where does that go Oh, there it is. It's going. It's going in here. Okay, that is going to fit into those two slots in there. Once we fitted that into there, so with that fitted into there, 
like so. That will allow us to put that one in like that. I'm guessing that is going to support Okay, so this, that is going, you see, I mean, this, this is the trouble, these instructions, they're very vague. That's going into there. Is it, is it going into there? You see, we've got this, you can see this piece here, this is the actual controls. It's just got a couple of arrows on there and then... Hmm. Very strange. But what I want to do, I think, is fit that onto there now. So I'm going to put a couple of drops of extra thin on here. In fact, what I'll do before I do that, I'm going to remove the moulded on detail because this is going to have a piece of photo etch going onto it. Let's just cut that detail away. Just like so, and then sand it flat. And then our photo etch is going to fit on there lovely when we're good and ready. So what we'll do is get some glue onto here, like so. That's going to sit like that. And then this piece is somehow going over the top. Oh dear. I'm assuming the two of them are going to meet up. No, they don't appear to. Okay, so again, you've got great big slots with tiny little pegs going into them. You can see the amount of play you got in there. So, um, it's not the best. Uh, I think I'm tempted to cut some plastic card or something to put in there because I mean it's, it's partially my fault I'm building out a sequence I'm not um I'm not blaming Hong Kong models for this this is my fault because if I was doing it as they said in the instructions I'd be butting this up against a wall what would I I think what I'm going to do is get a little piece of plastic card. There's my scraps box come here. I'm going to get a little piece of plastic card. There's a bit of 5,000. Let's get a bit of 10,000. Look at that. Because the camera's on, there will be no 10,000 plastic card in the world anywhere. There we go. There's a bit of 10,000. <laughs> Look at that. It's the perfect size. It's actually about half a millimetre too long. So I'm going to cut a sliver off the end. There we go. And what I'm going to do is glue that onto there. Once I've cut it to size. And that is just going to act as a little buttress for that piece I've just put on, a little buttress for it to knock up against. You're never going to see it. I 
but it's going to help with the integrity. So you know that can go up against there. Just like so. There we go, that is our turret mechanism dealt with. So you've got the control bits there. Um, we've got a piece of plastic card added on there, which is making things a lot better. Just going to trim that end off slightly because I've got it just slightly sticking out. There we go. There we are. So that's our turret assembled less its ammo boxes and breaches. Oh, we've got these two bits here to go on. So that one So that one is going in there and then the other one is going to go in the other side. So we'll grab our extra thin once again. Drop in there and then we'll grab our tweezers and plonk that one in there. Just like so. And then we'll plonk that one in there. Just like so. So there we are, we have our turret all assembled except for the ammo boxes and the breaches. So it's just a case now of letting all this dry and then um, get it all primed and painted. Right, I've done a bit off a camera here. Um, I've decided to glue the gun breeches in place uh, purely because their location is dubious at best. Um, there's no positive location for them. They just There's a peg sticking up. If you go back a couple of minutes in the video, you'll see there's, a, there's like a peg sticking up and it goes into a slot in the bottom of the gun. There's no, there's no sort of pin in hold or anything. You know, building this turret, it's like... The wheel bay and the, and the cockpit have gone together like a dream and the fit is just incredible. This, it's like it's been designed by a different person. Maybe Neil will let me know it has been designed by a different person because it is not, it's just not to the same, it's great, it's nice. I mean, look at that, it's all, it's all nicely detailed and stuff. There could be more, yes, Edward are adding to that, but um, it's just not up to the scratch of the, I mean if I'm honest, the fit and finish of the parts in here is better than the Border Model Lancaster, um, but the detail in the Border Model Lancaster is obviously, you know, a million miles ahead of this, purely because as I say they had the, they had the genuine item there to photograph and measure and, you know, I mean, they really couldn't get it wrong, could they? So, you know, re really, really nice. Hats off to Hong Kong model. These, This is probably the nicest turret they've done. But it's just, I don't know. But you can see here, there's the, there's the sort of cutout in the breech. And you've got like a square peg that goes into it. Well, there's no, they just want to rock around. There's no positive location. And as you can see, that one there is sort of slightly, slightly tipped over. So I'm just going to tip that back and get them square. But, uh... I seem to remember the Lancaster was this, the border models Lancaster was the same. Hang on a second, I've got to let Jess look out the window. Hang on, she's looking out the window now. She's happy. Um, however, saying that it's Monday, November the sixth, so it's the day after bonfire night, and there will no more than likely be fireworks going off. And it's not quite dark yet, um, but it doesn't matter. They normally let them off earlier in the daylight. I mean, what level of intelligence is that? Right, so. There we go. 
Right, so they're all nicely lined up. And what I've decided to do is put the bullets in because I fitted the guns because if it's all painted up nicely and everything, you haven't got a positive location, it's very difficult to get a tidy fit. So we'll have to do some fine detail painting to make sure we uh, get everything done nicely. Um, and of course, I want to get the bullets in because these bullets, as you can see, they're just flat, PE flat. Now, if you fold them over and then they just look like flat bullets. So I'm going to add some glue. I'll show you how I do that to make them look round. Um, now, a little tip for anybody that's new to photo etch. You can see here, going across this way, you can see there's a line, an etched line. And on the back, there's nothing. OK. Now, if ever you've got photo etch like this, the first thing to do is score up the back so that when we glue it together, it stays together. It doesn't just ping apart. So we're going to score up the back to give the glue something to work with. If ever you've got to do this, always fold away from the line. If you're having to fold right back on yourself, always fold away from the line. Always check with the photo etch because sometimes you'll have like assemblies like go like this and everything like that. Tom Scammel, the um, the fuel, the, the fuel, the exhaust manifold protector thing. You know, you've got to really work out how you're going to fold it up. But when it's something like this, always fold away from the line. The reason is, if you fold towards the line, like if you put it in your metal folder and fold up, it won't go right over because it's it's trying to come into each other. So what you've got to do is go away. So what I'm going to do is use these Tamiya bending pliers. Just line that up on there and just literally bend that over. Okay. And then I can get some glue if I've got any glue here. Yes, I have. It's still wet. Get some glue in there and give that a little squeeze. Just like so. And then what we can do then is with a radius blade, oops, we can get some glue into that end. Oh, come on. We can get some glue into there. Just give it a squeeze. It should eventually stay together. It's not the end of the road if it doesn't stay together because we're going to be making them appear round anyway. There we go. There we are. So now you can see we've got our bullets made up. As you can see, they're very sort of 2D. They're very flat. So what we've got to do is put these into those gears. I'm not sure if they're going to want to go. So we'll bend them over one by one. We'll see how they look. Well, you don't even reach for a start. So that's a waste of time, isn't it? <laughs> they don't even reach. They're like two bullets too short. Oh dear. I think we're going to have to leave our guns empty. I'm just wondering if I've got any spares. Yeah, if I have them, if I have them overreaching the guns, as you can see there, oh, they don't fit onto the teeth of the belts either. They're an absolute total waste of time, to be quite honest with you. They're not long enough. They don't reach. They won't go into the teeth. 
they just they just look awful don't they i think it's better leave them off just have a a plane that's been unloaded de de weaponized we'll throw those away because they're horrible right um as i say i've got the the ones from mdc which are very very nice but you can see here they're in there like they'd be going down the length of a b24 or something so um they're no good for for this because they're coming out of there loose so um i guess we're sort of stuck with that i'll have a quick look at my spares box see if i come across anything but i don't think i will right moving forward um that piece of plastic i put on there i've had to sand that back a bit because it was affecting the way this was all fitting together so if i put these guns in like so what i've decided to do is get the clear part still got the protective plastic on the top and i just want to check these guns are going to line up with the slots and what i'm finding is i can't get the turret to go on and what it is this piece of bloody photo etch here is too wide so when you do yours shorten it before you actually fit kind of hoping these Tamiya cutters are going to do this. I think they looks like they're going to. But the trouble is if I try and sand it, I think I'm going to end up with it. Um, I'm going to end up ripping them off, I think. So what I'm going to have to do is just sand it in one way so it's pushing towards the glue. Because what I don't want to do is flick it or bend it and then it'll never come back. So yeah. Bear that in mind when you do yours. So yeah, once again, we have... So we've got the bullets that are bloody awful. And then we've got this piece here being too long. holding that just hoping and praying it doesn't pick up and just grab it because it'll, what it'll do it'll grab it and bend it I just want to get this to slide over I'm glad I checked all this now before we did any painting there we go it fits now so now with the guns in place Will this just drop on? Mm. I think what's happening is that these pieces inside are catching on the guns. There we go. It kind of clips into place. I don't know why. It's so yeah, those guns line up perfectly. That was why I did this. And I wanted to check that they're not sort of too low down or whatever. Um, so I seem to remember on the on the Borders Models Lancaster, I think it was I think it was the upper turret. The I had to bring the guns out. They were too they were too close, they didn't line up with the clear. I think it was the upper turret. And that one, I'm just looking here. Where's my pointy thing? There it is. I'm just looking. Here we go. Yeah, I think they're going to be fine. I think what I'll do is cut these plastic barrels off their fret, off their sprue, should I say, because I'm not going to be using them because they're not very nice. But then what can you do with plastic? You can't get any better than that, really. Um, just slot those into those guns. We should be able to see, yeah, we're good. Everything's straight. The barrels are parallel to each other. So that's all good. So we're ready to get some paint on now. Get some primer on there, get some paint on. Um, I need to be, here comes the bloody fireworks again. Uh, I can't stand the bloody things. I really can't stand them. 
So we're gonna let all that dry, let it go solid, and then we'll give it a coat of um coat of black primer, and then we can give it all a coat of green and then go around and do some detail painting. So we'll see how it looks when it's all done. So we'll call that a day for um for this part. And as usual, I'll go away, I'll do my painting offline, and then we'll come back and uh Let's see how we get on once we've got everything painted. Get those two there squared up. Look. Like that. As I say, we've got to then work out where the bloody other seat harness is going to go. Anyway, so there we are. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope the rest of the kit is better than this. Because this has been like working on a completely different kit after the, the wonderful moulding and fit and part engagement and cleanliness and everything after working on the cockpit and the front and the nose gear bay i hope everything else is as good as them because this hasn't been as as good it's not as just it's not bad it's just not very positive fitting there's lots of great big squares with tiny little square lugs in them so that you know you've got no positive location um it just could be better that's all and i know neil's gonna write to me and say do you think i should change the molds and i shall say nope just do it better next time. So there we go. So that's our turret all together. So I will see you for part... Uh, this is part 9, isn't it? So I'll see you for part 10. Or is this part 9? Well, that's I don't know. Whatever the next one is, I'll see you then. It's going to be 9 or 10, isn't it? I think it's 10. Right, see you all soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.